Welcome back to Mining of Massive Datasets. We're continuing our discussion of online algorithms. Now, we just warmed up by looking at an online algorithm called the greedy algorithm for the bipartite graph matching problem. We're going to look now at an application of online algorithms, which is performance-based advertising. And in particular, we're going to look at a problem called the AdWords problem. Let's start with the short history of advertising on the web. Now, from, uh, you know, the web advertising started uh, almost simultaneously with the World Wide Web itself. Uh, and in the early days of the web, the only kind of ads that you see online uh, were banner ads. Um, and these reigned supreme from uh, till about 2001. Um, and banner ads were very, very simple. They were graphical units that, that you saw on web pages. Um, and popular websites uh, charged a certain number of dollars uh, for every thousand impressions of the ad. Uh, this is called the, the CPM rate, or the cost per thousand uh, impressions, where M is the Roman uh, numeral for, uh, for a thousand, and that's why it's called a CPM uh, rate. And this, uh, this model uh, comes to us from uh, TV or magazine ads, which are priced similarly uh, based on the circulation of the magazine or the, or the number of viewers of, the, of a TV show. Uh, and um, this is a good initial model to, uh, to start off with, uh, but it doesn't really, um, you know, exploit uh, a lot of information that we have available on the web that we don't have, have available, uh, you know, uh, on TV or in a magazine ad. Uh, in, in particular, these ads are very, very untargeted. So the same ad is shown to everyone who uh, comes to a website or, or sees a particular page on a website. And so these ads, not surprisingly, perform really, really poorly. Now, how do we measure performance? Typically, advertisers measure performance of ads by looking at how many people click on, on the ad. Uh, what they look at is what's called the click-through rate, which is the ratio of the number of clicks the ad receives uh, divided by the number of impressions of that ad. Remember, impressions are what the advertiser is paying for uh, in the CPM rate, and the clicks are what they want. Uh, and so they measure the return on advertiser, uh, return on investment, or, or, or ROI, by looking at the ratio of clicks to impressions. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, the early banner ads, which are completely untargeted, have very low click-through rates and very low ROI for advertisers. Um, and this sort of prompted a move of uh, banner advertising uh, that, that went from untargeted uh, and then kind of moved to demographically targeted. You can sort of um, get demographic information, broad demographic information about the kinds of people who are likely to see a given web page um, and target uh, ads to those people. For example, you can place um, automotive ads uh, on, on a site about uh, car repair, for instance, right? So you can sort of broadly demographically target um, uh, ads uh, to, to, specific, uh, to specific websites. But in general, these ads still don't perform really well because they are very broadly targeted. Now, all this changed uh, with, uh, with the advent of a next new form of advertising uh, called performance-based advertising. And uh, performance-based advertising was first introduced by a company called Overture uh, around the year uh, 2000. Now, a lot of you may not remember Overture, uh, but uh, it was another search engine, uh, you know, that uh, existed uh, around the year 2000. Um, and uh, their innovation um, uh, at Overture uh, was that they um, allowed advertisers to bid on search keywords. So people searched uh, on Overture, much as they search on search engines like Google and Bing today. Um, and advertisers bid to appear uh, you, you know, on those search results by bidding on specific search keywords. Um, and when somebody searches for that keyword, uh, then uh, Overture used to show the ad of the highest bidder followed by the actual uh, search results. Um, but the key uh, innovation uh, that Overture made was that the advertiser was charged only if the ad was actually clicked on. Right? The advertiser did not charge, um, you know, did not pay for the impression, but they paid only for the click. Um, and so this is called performance-based ad advertising, or cost per click advertising, uh, to distinguish it from uh, the, 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 the impression-based or uh, CPM advertising that preceded it. Now, it turned out that advertisers really liked uh, performance-based advertising, uh, or CPC advertising. And, um, and Overture did uh, really well uh, and ended up being acquired by, by Yahoo uh, much later on. However, um, um, Google, uh, which was uh, another search engine which was getting started at roughly the same time, uh, uh, you know, adopted a very similar model to Overture's around 2002, and they call it AdBirds. 
Um, now, we're all familiar with AdWords when we search on Google today, when we see these, uh, see these ads uh, on Google, which are uh, ads that are targeted to the searches that we do. Um, and um, the, the idea originally came from, from Overture and was then adopted by Google. Now, as you will see, Google made uh, some um, important changes to the Overture model uh, in terms of how advertisers bid and what ads get shown. Now, it turns out that performance-based uh, advertising actually works. Uh, advertisers really like to pay only for clicks as opposed to uh, impressions. Uh, and so it is a multi-billion dollar industry, primarily uh, around search marketing. Uh, and there are a number of algorithmic challenges around performance-based advertising. Um, there are, uh, you know, they, they roughly fall into two buckets. The first bucket is uh, from the point of view of a search engine, which is what ads do I show for a given query? And that's the topic of today's lecture. And the second set of challenges come from an advertiser point of view. Uh, and the problem here is if I'm an advertiser, which search term should I bid on and how much should I bid for those search terms? Now, this is not the focus of today's lecture, but it's in fact a very important problem, and there's an entire industry segment uh, that focuses around uh, uh, this problem as well. So we formalize uh, the, uh, the problem uh, of, uh, from the search engine's point of view. Uh, we call it the AdWords problem uh, because uh, it was originally formulated in the context of Google's uh, AdWords. Um, and in the AdWords problem, a stream of queries arrives at a search engine. And let's, let's say that's Q1, Q2, Q3, and so on. And in general, a search engine knows uh, the queries that it has seen so far, but it cannot predict the queries it's going to see next. Now, several advertisers have bid on each search query. When a query QI arrives, the search engine must pick a subset of advertisers whose ads are shown. Right? Uh, when you search, uh, there's a number of uh, advertisers who bid for that um, keyword. Uh, now, there's usually a larger set of advertisers that are bid for a keyword than the search engine can show. Uh, most search engines have a policy that, that said they will show at most one ad or two ads or three ads uh, for each search query. There may be tens or hundreds of uh, bidders for each search query, so the search engine must decide which subset of advertisers um, it will pick and show their ads for that search query. And remember, remember this looks very, very similar to the um, model for bipartite graph matching, and it's no coincidence. The goal is to maximize the search engine's uh, revenues by showing the, the appropriate set of ads. And clearly, we need an online algorithm in this case uh, because the uh, search engine can only see one query at a time, uh, and it must make an irrevocable decision of, of deciding which uh, ads to show. But it cannot go back and change uh, the ads it showed in the past, nor does it know what queries are going to come in the future. So we need uh, an online algorithm uh, for this problem, very similar to the algorithm that we had for the bipartite graph matching problem. Now it turns out that there is a very simple uh, heuristic uh, that you can use to create an online algorithm for the AdWords problem, and that heuristic is called expected revenue. Let's first look at a very simple example. Let's say we have um, a particular query Q, and we have three advertisers A, B, and C who have each bid on query Q. And their bids are shown uh, in this table here. Advertiser A has bid a dollar for each click. Advertiser B has bid 75 cents for each click. And advertiser C has bid 50 cents per click. And remember now, these are bids per click. So if the search engine decides to show uh, advertiser A's ad, then advertiser A pays if there is a click um, uh, at that time. The advertiser A doesn't pay anything if the user doesn't click on the ad, but the ad just gets shown. Right? Now, the search engine doesn't know a priori whether the ad is going to get clicked or not. Uh, so the simple uh, heuristic that Overture used when they first uh, introduced um, uh, you know, performance-based advertising was to just show the, uh, the ad from the highest paying advertiser. They used to uh, sort advertisers by bid, um, as shown here, um, and uh, uh, you know, from top to bottom. So advertiser A, A has the highest bid, advertiser B has the second highest bid, and advertiser C has the third highest bid. So if I'm going to show only one ad, I might as well show advertiser A's ad, because adver advertiser A is willing to pay the most for cl per click. 
Um, where, you know, if I'm going to show two ads, I should just show advertisers A and B's ads, but not C's, because A and B are both willing to pay more than C for each click. So this is a simple heuristic uh, that uh, Overture used uh, for, uh, you know, for, uh, for, for deciding which ads to show. Now, it turns out that this is not the optimal um, algorithm for this, uh, for this scenario. Um, and uh, the, the, the important reason is that ads behave very differently in terms of how they get clicked. So what we should instead measure is something called the click-through rate of each ad. Now suppose advertisers A's ads, um, on average, let's say we show, show all these ads many, many times and measure how often they're clicked. Let's say advertiser A's ads are clicked 1% of the time, uh, B's ads are clicked 2% of the time, and C's ads are clicked 2.5% of the time, right? Now, if I show advertiser A's ad, um, and it's just clicked 1% of the time, then each time I show advertiser A's ad, there's a 1% chance it's going to be clicked. And if it does get clicked, I get paid a dollar. And so my expected revenue from showing advertisers A's ad is a dollar times 1%, which is a penny, right? And similarly, um, my expected revenue from showing advertisers B's ad once is 75 cents times uh, 2%. And, and similarly for C, my expected revenue is 50 cents times 2.5%. And so we can go ahead and compute the expected revenue for each um, advertiser by multiplying their bid and their CTR uh, and in this case, we find out that the expected um, revenue for advertiser A is one cent, the expected revenue for advertiser B is 1.5 cents, and the expected revenue for advertiser C is 1.125 cents. Right? Now, the important innovation that Google did that over, uh, you know, beyond the model that Overture had introduced was to observe this and notice that it's much better to sort advertisers by expected revenue than it is to sort them by bid. Right? So uh, when you sort by bid, you place advertiser A first, uh, whereas when you sort by expected revenue, uh, you observe that advertiser B is actually a much better advertiser, uh, advertiser's ad to show. So if you just had to show one ad, uh, you'd much rather show advertiser B's ad because their expected revenue is uh, 1.5 cents as opposed to showing advertiser A's ad where the expected revenue is just one cent. So, so in fact, if you sort by, uh, by expected revenue uh, rather than actual bid amount, uh, you get a different sort order with B, C, A instead of A, B, C. And this is, in fact, the AdWords innovation that Google introduced. Now, it turns out that uh, sorting by expected revenue is a very, very good heuristic, um, and it, uh, it works well uh, for the AdWords problem. Now it turns out though that there are a few more constraints in the AdWords problem that the, just the uh, sorting by expected revenue doesn't solve. Uh, let's look at some of those, um, those constraints. So let's uh, formally state uh, the AdWords problem. We are given a set of bids by advertisers for search queries. Now we just looked at one search query, but in general remember there are many, many search queries uh, and uh, there are many, many advertisers and each advertiser bids for some set of search queries. So, um, so there's a set of bids by advertiser for surf, advertisers for search queries. You can think of this as a bipartite graph with um, advertisers on one side and search queries on the other, and there are edges between advertisers and search queries. We are also given a click-through rate for each advertiser query pair that, that has been estimated. Now the, the new thing that we haven't seen so far is that each advertiser has a budget, right? Now, advertisers don't have infinite advertising budget. Um, you know, advertiser might say, look, I'm willing to spend at most $1,000 a day, or I'm at most willing to spend $100,000 a month, or a million dollars a month. But there is always a limit to how much an advertiser can spend, which is defined by their advertising budget. So each advertiser has a budget which they, uh, which they tell the search engine. Now the search engine also has a limit on the number of ads to be displayed with each search query, right? Um, for example, the search engine may say, look, I'm going to show at most one ad for each search query, or two, or three. Now in uh, some modern search engines, the number of ads actually uh, depends on the kind of query as well. But in a simple scenario, 
uh, let's imagine that uh, there is a fixed limit on the number of ads to be displayed with each search query. Now the AdWords problem is then, given all these, to respond to each search query with a set of ads. Um, and we have to find a set of ads so that the size of the set is no, uh, no larger than the limit of the number of ads per query. right? And we also have to make sure that we only show advertisers who actually bid for the search query. Otherwise, we are not going to get paid. Um, and finally, and most critically, we have to make sure that not only has, has the advertiser bid on the query, but the advertiser has budget left over to pay for the ad if it is actually clicked upon. Right? If you show an ad from an advertiser whose budget has been exhausted because uh, lots of ads have been clicked on from that advertiser, uh, then if somebody clicks on the ad, then the advertiser doesn't have enough budget left over to pay for the ad when it's clicked, then the search engine doesn't get paid, so there's no point showing that advertiser's ad. So once um, a, the, the budget of an advertiser has been exhausted, we can effectively assume that the advertiser is out of the game and is no longer bidding on, on any, uh, any search queries. So the AdWords problem is therefore to find a set of ads for each search query that satisfy these, uh, these criteria. So here's a simple algorithm that we've seen, which was a sort by expected revenue, which is bit time CTR. And it turns out that if the CTR of each ad is known, and if advertisers have unlimited budgets, uh, then the uh, simple algorithm, which is to sort by expected revenue, is actually optimal. However, advertisers don't have unlimited budgets in practice, um, and the CTR of an ad is unknown, um, and uh, so we have to uh, do something different. Let's start with problem one, which is uh, to estimate the click-through rate of an ad. Uh, and in the next lecture, we look at an algorithm called balance, which deals with the fact that advertisers have limited budgets. So look at the problem of estimating the click-through rate of an ad. Now, this looks like a very simple problem. All we have to do is to measure the click-through rate of a query ad pair historically. Which has, we just have to show um, an ad a large number of times, right? Let's say 1,000 or 10,000. And we have to measure the number of clicks uh, for that ad, query ad pair, um, and then we have the CTR for that query ad, uh, query ad pair. Um, and so far, so good. This is, in fact, the right way to do it. Uh, but there are a couple of um, uh, challenges, which we actually won't have time to cover in this lecture. Uh, the first is that the click-through rate is actually position dependent. Um, so remember, a search engine may show more than one ad uh, for a given query. So an ad that's shown in position one generally gets more clicks than an ad that's shown in position number two. Right? So, so therefore, we actually have to measure the click-through rate for a query ad pair for each position, not just for a query ad pair, because the click CTR is position dependent. Uh, and the second problem that we have is something called ex explore v exploit trade-off. Now, imagine that we have a lot of ads for a given query, and we, we show, we've shown them a lot, and we know their CTR. And now, a new advertiser comes in and also bids on the query. Now, we don't know the CTR of the new ad. However, we know the CTR of the old ads. Now, should we show the new ad at all uh, and take the risk that it doesn't get clicked on much and we lose some revenue? Or should we just ignore the new ad, just go with the ads that we already know their CTR and keep showing them to optimize revenue? Right? Should we just uh, exploit the known information, the known CTRs, the known ads, or should we explore what the new ad does? Perhaps the new ad is really good and has a high CTR, uh, but we don't know. Perhaps it's actually bad and has a low CTR. So this problem is called explore uh, be exploit trade-off, uh, and there's it's a, it's a very richly studied uh, branch of um, you know research, uh, which again we won't have time to cover in this lecture. We'll just assume that we know the click-through rate for each query ad pair because it's been given to us.